All right, so I have this guitar here. It's a Guitar Hero 5 guitar. It says Upstrum Bad, waiting on donor. So I'm going to replace the switches today, but we're going to make it extra complicated because I bought the wrong switches. Now, I do have replacement of these. They're perfect, they work really well, they're awesome and I enjoy them. But those are more reserved for commission builds and stuff. I did, however, because they were so cheap and I didn't read the description well enough, I got these. More linear, no tactile, no click, no nothing. But they still have the same amount of force as the tactile. So I tested this and I put these into an Explorer and I saw that they don't overstrum, they don't mess up, they actually perform very well, they have a great spring back, just, they're honestly, besides the, the more rock bandy sound and feel to them, they are great switches. So what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be replacing the Guitar Hero 5 switches with these. Now the issue is, is that the switches are slightly different. The distance between the, the pins is actually, I think, tighter on this than it is on the other ones. And the other one has a third pin for mounting and keeping it in place. And also, because the strum bar is so big, these, as much as they have a great amount of pressure, I feel if I add the springs from a World Tour guitar, it'll be just that much better. It just adds a little bit of oomph to it. Now the issue there is, we'll show you in a second, that when you take this all apart, other than um, the switches being different in the, the width of the pins, there's no room for a spring. Uh, but also because these are rubberized and over the years the rubberized coating comes off, whether through playing or getting scratched or whatever, I'm going to be replacing the start, the star power slash select, the, this start, the strum bar, and maybe even this guy here, because they're all just really rough. So in a way, it's kind of a refurb, more just a fix. Um, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to modify a World Tour board like this with the limit switches. Uh, I'm going to steal some parts off of it, and then I'm going to make this board uh, a donor, a different World Tour board a donor for this guitar. So I'm going to start actually by taking apart the World Tour guitar. And these things are awesome. I usually find these for under 10 bucks. Yeah, um, like... I wind up spending like 80 to 100 but I get a whole lot of these for PlayStation. They work for PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, um, games that, you know, on PS2, games that let you play with the, the USB dongles. Um, but they're just great for donor for using for donor parts. Before I went to the D-sub connectors for the necks, I used to steal all the neck pieces out of here. Now, I've noticed that I need this pry tool. It's a body kit pry tool for cars, but I noticed that I need this a lot lately, so it probably wouldn't hurt to pick one of these up if you're going to be working on guitars, because what happens is, it's already unlocked. The screw honestly just fell out weird. What happens is, you pull up on this all day long, it's unlocked, and I'm pulling as hard as I can, and it just won't come out. So what I do is I get this pry tool behind here, and I pop out those two, and then the rest just comes with it. So now I have a free faceplate. I can sand this down and uh, paint it back up, do whatever I want with it. It's a good faceplate. Now I'll tell you that most of these are never taken apart, it's hence the, the warranty sticker. It's still good. Get that out of there. Uh, the whammy is destroyed. It's got ripped off or cut. But don't worry, that thing is really floppy anyways. So while I can use the potentiometer, um, the bar not so much, but I could always cut the bar down and make something else out of it. And also I noticed that the screws are different, um, guitar to guitar. Like World Tour to 5, the screws here, these four, they are actually Phillips, where they're T6 on the Guitar Hero 5 some old batteries in there that I didn't even know about but we'll check those put this off to the side here we got strap holders we got a battery cover and even a back if need be it's not in the worst shape that can always be sanded and painted but now the more important part I want to get this out to get those switches out and then get this out to get the strum bar 
So we're going to save these springs, put them off to the side. I need the spring holders, these two tabs there. Because that's what I'm going to put on the GH5 board for the springs. That off to the side. We get the strum bar out. And I'm going to save all my PS3, PS2 shells. So when I eventually start making Arduino board guitars, I've got everything there. And then even then, what I'll do is I'll wind up taking the extra strum bars I have from other guitars and whatnot, and I'll make it all work. I'm actually testing some rubberized coatings for strum bars. So yeah, now these I'll put back in there. There's my strum bar. I'm going to put some grease on the tabs there, clean up the strum bar a little bit. And I generally leave things disassembled when I take them apart, just because I have everything organized now. I spent a day and a half organizing all of my Guitar Hero parts, because I kept on building stuff and being like, I know I had this and I cannot find it. And then I found everything I was ever looking for and then some. So this, we'll use the pad for the five, but we'll take the springs out. So I will put the pad back. Just put this over it. Good enough. Good enough. And what I'll do, just because, is I'll put the back back on. All right, and then there's a nice donor shell for Oh, and the nice part is, too, I don't know if it's just happenstance or because people didn't play PlayStation as much, and as well as Wii, but these switches generally always work on PlayStation guitars. They just, they don't seem to ever go out. Whereas on 360, pretty much every guitar I buy for 360 um, does not work. I mean, I'll also mention I only buy used and untested stuff or things that people say are tested but broken because I want to keep... The, the price down as low as I possibly can um, so yeah I mean if I bought something that was like straight up hey this is tested and working then I wouldn't say much but I obviously prefer to buy things that don't work but just saying that in the realm of it all when people say this is untested and I don't know if it works or not generally PlayStation always works now I have a neck for five that I made last night with mechanical frets so I'll wind up using that but for now, I mean, it even has a sticker still on it for the... This guitar looks like it wasn't ever played, but obviously in testing, the strum bar didn't work. So that's unlocked. And look at that, it came right off. Also never been opened. It's one of my greatest joys to be the first person to open up a guitar. What's with all these guitars being so nasty, guys? I will say, only thing worse... By a mile, it's actually not only worse, it's worse by a mile, is people who smoke in houses that play Guitar Hero. Like, sometimes it's the parents' fault, I mean, for smoking in the house. But sometimes, I mean, I've seen on stream people smoking cigarettes while they play Guitar Hero. So it's like, hey man, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? I want to clean this up first. This is really gross. I don't know if that translates well to camera. But look at how just nasty it is everywhere 15 whole minutes of cleaning later and I used to play in a basement so I get it I guess but sometimes the areas in which we play are just super grody all right so now what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna replace these switches and clean I'm gonna take them take them out replace them I'm sorry take them out clean it up replace them then I'm going to worry about making this. Like, I'll get the strum out and all. But then I'm going to worry about showing you the more detail. The whole point of this whole video... Is that a sticker? That's confetti. There was confetti in this guitar. Alright, so like I said, I'm going to use the springs and the pad out of here. God, even the pad. Look at how nasty that is. 
I fully believe in this day and age, especially with like Clone Hero being such a big thing, that everybody should learn how to take apart their guitar and clean it pretty good once in a while. Just get all the grime and grit out of it. As for this hole, I generally take a screwdriver It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than it was. All right, so then we take the Guitar Hero World Tour. Okay, we put the pad back on, then the springs. Then we put this back on. That one is a super quick. Very quick. The trick is here, you just gotta hold the board down pretty flush. I'm trying to work on getting another camera angle from like more where my uh, screen is. But for now, work with me. I know no one seems to care. All right. the strum bar and all that. Turn on my solder station. Uh, I guess I can take this off first since it has to come off first. And also, I always like to prop up my stuff with tape or something of the sort. Gives it a level surface, but also the whammy and whatnot. Man, there's hair. There's a whole bunch of hair in here, man. Ugh. I also like too, that I noticed this last night, that this board is for both PS3 and 360. It just matters if it were to be wired to these three pins or to these four, or five rather. And then there's the lights and whatnot. I'm get, yeah, four lights and a ground, that makes sense. Now this, red goes here. That way I remember. So yeah, as you can see, these are the switches that they use, which is cool because it's better than the limit switches. These are nice, but I feel as much as these are great for other applications, uh, I mean, I put them in rock band guitars, so it works too, but I like that they went back to the key switch. So first we're going to replace the strum bar, because why not? And I'll just put that off to the side, sandblast it or paint remover, get all this, uh, the rubberized coating off. This, let me go put some grease. Actually, you know what? Instead of putting grease on here, I'm just going to put grease in the holes for that. And personally, I use a little bit more, yeah, dang it. I use a little bit more grease than I really have to, but it works out in the end. I just feel like the grease stops any squeaking, because squeaking is usually not the strum switches, it's the bar itself. And considering that this doesn't have a steel bar in it, you know, that's what you get. So we will throw, I guess it doesn't matter which is which, just weird at the different colors. And as always, it doesn't matter, but I do mention it because I like mentioning it. I always go across whenever I'm tightening anything down, whether it's a car, a machine, a Guitar Hero controller, a Xbox 360 controller. I should do some videos on that. I actually have an old Xbox Duke controller that the face buttons don't work on it. At least like two of the face buttons don't work. And since I'm a lover of Duke controllers, I would love to do a video on that. So now that um, this is off, I'm gonna move the camera back over here a little bit. What I'm gonna do, because this is what I did last night, is I'm going to literally just cut the two holder tabs because it's easier for me to hold my solder tip on these two and pull it out, but not so much easy to do the third one. Uh, I wish I had a hot solder gun, you know, like an air gun, but I don't, and at the moment, I can't afford it. 
So eventually I'll get around to that. What I will do though is take my cutoff or my uh, bit. So what that does is it just removes any surface level stuff on it. Get my string of solder here, just a little on the tip. And um, I, th I know I've shown it before, but I'm gonna show it again. What I do is I pull my fingers, like I wedge my fingers between the two, and I pull out as I am putting the tip of solder on it. And usually I can do it quick enough where it just comes right out. Now, I'm going to be drilling these holes out, because as mentioned, here, these two are open a little bit. Actually, I'll grab my solder sucker. Also, would like to get a nice, like, desoldering station rather than a solder sucker, but in due time. So, as you can see, these holes are nice and clean here. And if I were to take the new switch, which is here, and put it here... It doesn't quite line up. The holes are just ever so slightly off. And if I were to shove them in there, it would bend the tab sideways and it would probably break the switch. So what I do is I grab my drill. Now I could um, drill through there and then just solder to the contact trace. But what I'll wind up doing is I'll just take some wires and I'll just wire this common to this common and then this to the, there and I'll just wire take a wire to each you'll see in a second and I want to go from this side down because I'm not sure why I think it rips it rips either way but if I go from here or there um, I have a clean part on the top now I actually do have to remove the solder on this one because I need the hole All right, then I can drill those holes out. Now it's hard to notice there, but if you did see, it kind of sucks it in and then I pull back out and then that gives me a pretty clean hole. Now I was using my cheapo X-Acto knife, but I'm actually gonna use my nice one for this. And I. I don't know. I can't find it at the moment, so I'm going to use the cheaper one. Okay, and also what I'm going to do, because again, I'm copying verbatim what I did last night. It's always nice when I do a project at the start, and I spend like two whole hours on it, and then I can redo it in a quicker manner. So I get my new switches, I feed them through, and they're kind of tight, but that's good. I'd rather it be a little tight than perfectly loose. And I line those up. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to put a bead of uh, hot glue around this. Then I'm going to fit the board in, and I'll get my measurements for the, the springs, for the spring holders. Then after that, I will then put the springs on, drill the holes, do all that nine yards. Then I will wire in um, the actual switches to there. What I will do in the meantime while I'm waiting for the hot glue gun to pop up is I'm going to take these tabs and I'm going to bend them back. And as long as they're pretty straight, which they are, uh, should be good. Make sure that they're seated. Alright, I'll be back in a sec. Alright, and the glue gun is heated up. I used to have like a professional, awesome, like a giant glue gun, and I have no idea where it went. I also lost a jigsaw, a drill. I lost a bunch of power tools. Alright. So back to this. God, I'm a nice person, but I'm also a jerk sometimes. 
So this goes here. Oh, I need my tape to prop that up. Now what I also do is I will take, are they are all the springs the same? They seem to be, but now nah, the, the black actually is slightly wider. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Sharpie. This one will work just fine. All right, so there's my line there. It's my line there. What I'm gonna do then, I'm gonna get my handy dandy measuring device out. Score a line, so it's nice and easy to see. Score a line. Then, this should be actually off a little bit. It shouldn't be dead center just because I learned that last night all right then I verify with my drill uh, actually I'll do a small hole with the drill bit the smaller drill bit first okay then I will go to the bigger drill bit. I may have to open up the hole, but you know what? No big deal. Also, I didn't try to go that fast because it, this thing, these things are brittle and they break easily. It's okay to chip a board, but you obviously don't want to break a board. Oh, and I found my professional X-Acto knife. All right, and then I grab these things there, put it through the hole. I will have to hold it in place because obvious reasons, and I just dropped that screw. Let's pick up the screw. Sitting here trying to grab something else. Where's my screwdriver? Alright, to get it nice and tight, I hold it with the cutters. I may or may not be editing a lot of this video down. It may just be a raw footage type thing. But what's new? Oh, I turned 30 on Saturday, so that's cool. Happy about that, I guess. Even though I'm pretty bummed that I can't go see my best friend, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so now the the pegs are in place for the springs. This goes like this. And just as last night, the holes are off a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll just take these screws out and I'll move it this way. All right, so I got no audio here, but I took the screws out and moved it. Um, I had to throw a little bit of hot glue on it because the screw heads were too big compared to the holes and they were falling through. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that it was going to stick and, and be solid there. So here's me reassembling the guitar. I actually, at first, totally forgot about wiring the switches to the... Um, board itself so um, you know just the reassembly of that and then I believe after the fact is when I put the um, put the wires in and all that I probably could have edited this part out but I'm not going to at this point and if I hadn't mentioned before these screwdrivers from Germany WIA 
They're like the best screwdrivers in the world. Like for hobbyist type stuff. I'm sure Husky and other brands have, you know, more reputable name and market share, but I've been using these for like 10 years now. And I actually am going to buy a T10 uh, driver instead of using my like multi-bit. Yeah, they're cool. Almost at the end of me having to sit here and make noise. So uh, then we'll get back to our regularly, regularly scheduled programming. Also, I did mention it somewhere else that the um, the wires needed to be reversed, but that was on the other guitar, not this one. So you can see here the springs in the middle really help to recenter the strum bar. Sorry, my dad called me, and I was still working and stuff while he was talking. And I'm just like over here, like, oh, I'm done. But no, I need to wire up basically, where's that Sharpie? Basically here to here, then there to there. I mean, just follow the traces. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> what I'm going to do first is put some solder on the switches. I'm going to get my trusty wire out. And it's actually kind of funny. I mentioned the other day how um, I had a whole spool, or I used to take spools from work in the past for my last job. And I was cleaning out my toolbox yesterday, and I was like, oh, my God, there is, like, 30 feet of this stuff in a brand new bag. So that was nice. Is that long enough to reach? Sure. So I'm going to show you a trick that I do. I'm going to strip these wires and I'm going to show you a trick that I do. So when I need to solder two wires together, like I need to put two wires on this so I can have one go here, one go there. What I do is I take them side by side. And normally I would suggest don't twist wires together. Unless you absolutely have to. But you twist them together. Then... You tin both of them, that way they're tinned together. I cut the excess off. Okay. Cut the excess off, and then I'm just gonna wire this to this switch right there. Okay. Now, I should go get my wire strippers. Okay. Then we tin these. And while I'm here, I might as well just There we go. Just give a little bit of life to that. Cut the excess off these. Get that out of there. Get some solder on my tip again. All right, and then now the commons are done. <clears throat> Now I just need to make a wire from here to there, and then from there to there. So I got a blue wire here. Here, let me tin this and put it on first, then I'll shorten it up. You don't always have to do it like this, but I actually do like to kind of make it match the match the trace itself. Okay. 
I guess the biggest point of this whole video is that mistakes are fixable. No matter what, unless like you kill somebody or you do some real serious damage, mistakes are always fixable. I'll wind up cutting the excess off these. All right, now I get another wire. And also for those that do solder stuff, do you prefer the traditional sponge or do you like the the metal like, I'm not going to call it a wick, but like the metal brush? I see a lot of new kids come with this metal brush and I'm just, I'm old school, I'm like, I like the sponge. Alright. Now I'm going to burn myself if I do it this close, but should be good. Cut the excess. Let's bend this. There. Now before I put it all back together, I do want to just plug it in real quick. Test to make sure it's good. Because weirdly enough, yesterday, <clears throat> um, this one needed to be backwards. Even though I soldered it all right, this, the plug itself needed to be backwards. So, Cool, so that works. So let's get the batteries out. And then I'm going to assemble this back up together. I'll do that off camera, and then I'll be back in just a sec to test this out. All right, so I'm done here. Uh, it wasn't too bad. It was definitely quicker than last night when I was, you know just messing around with how I can turn a mistake of buying the wrong switches into something good and I really believe that yeah I've turned the mistake of buying the wrong switches into something good um, now that I've played the other one that I did for a little bit and this one um, I haven't played this one yet but I'm just feeling it. Uh, it it's really reminiscent of the GH arcade if it was just like 10% better um, I know some people will say that the GH arcade strum bars suck but um, basically it feels like a regular strum bar. It just doesn't have the super audible click. Um, but because these bars are bigger and all, it's just, it, it feels the same, it has the same rebound, the same force, all that. It just, it's a little quieter without that click. Um, the springs definitely help, so it was good that I did that on both of them. Um, but yeah, that's done. I'll load up some Clone Hero here. Put some batteries in this thing, load up some Clone Hero, do a test. Now, uh, before I do, I do want to show you the guitar I worked on last night that gave me the inspiration for this. Um, so, I let my kids with some paint markers, my 10 and 8-year-old, just draw whatever they wanted on here. Um, my 8-year-old loves Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, so there's red guy, yellow guy, and I call him duck, but maybe green guy. Um, you can kind of see. Uh... I might have put those lines in it because I don't think he did originally and I was like well he's got like hair and stuff so if it looks messed up it's on me uh, but then I put like this uh, it's not like a clear coat paint it's more like a hobbyist uh, it's like a spray epoxy kind of thing to do like vases and things of that nature um, from Krylon but I sprayed that so it looks kind of hazy but it'll really save the paint from being wiped away which I like you know it's very personal to me I love my kids so, uh, yeah, there's that. I also made um, the mech fret neck because I had the board for it, which is really why I did this in the first place. It's like, I have the mech fret board for a Guitar Hero 5 guitar. Uh, I might as well do it, but both Guitar Hero 5 guitars that I had had broken strum switches on them. So this is just a good fix, you know. 
Um, if, if let's say if I were to sell either one, well, I wouldn't sell this faceplate, but if I sold either body, I would most likely replace the switches, need be. Um, so what I'm going to do for clone hero testing is I'm going to test real quick with the original neck on this guitar. Then I'm actually going to switch over to the neck fret neck just because... I, you guys know me by now. I don't like silicone and membranes anymore. Let's see if I... I've been pretty much I've seen this every time that I play it. But because of the frets, I don't know. personal best. I really don't like being a lefty. Um, kind of sucks from time to time because I don't like that this is right here. When I feel like I'm going for like the star power or the whammy, I feel like I'm going to overstorm with that. But
So there's that. Strumbar works just fine. 